I've got a very interesting video for you guys today. Today we are going to be covering more information that has come out about the Heidi Broussard and Megan Formusca case. If you guys are not familiar with that case, Heidi Broussard and Megan Formusca were best friends. Heidi goes missing along with her three week old baby. Then Heidi's body is found in the trunk of her best friend's car and her best friend is pretending that the baby is her own. Yeah. Before we get any more into this though, I do want to let you guys know that this video is for entertainment and educational purposes only. Please do not show hate to anybody anywhere in your everyday life, in the grocery store, in your home, and especially in the comment section down below. Please remember to be kind to everybody everywhere. morning my lovelies my beauties my friends my name is Christina and welcome to my channel if you're new here thank you so much for clicking on this video I really hope that you will subscribe stick around take a chance on hearing some things that I have to say and if you are a returning subscriber y'all already know y'all are my babies so good morning good morning good morning how is everybody doing today i hope you all are having an amazing day so today i've got some very very interesting details for y'all i heard an interview where shane who is actually the boyfriend and the baby daddy of heidi the, the young woman that went missing an interview that he did with another youtuber before we get into all of those details because there is some really really good stuff that's going to be in this video so make sure y'all stay till the end i want to give a huge shout out to critical k she is the youtuber that landed this interview with shane carey and she did a really really good job on this interview. I will leave her channel and the video that I'm talking about linked down in the description box so you guys can go and watch the whole, it's an hour long interview if you guys want to, and it was good. She was very, very empathetic with him, but she also asked the tough questions. So shout out to you, Critical K, and shout out to my girl Holly for telling me about Critical K. All right, so let's get into some of these details. Like I said, if you guys wanna watch the whole entire video and the whole entire interview check that out but i'm going to give you guys like the keynotes and the hot spots on it it started out with shane talking a lot about heidi now heidi is the one who is now passed away and who was found in the her best friend's trunk of her car he talked about how she was like super smart he talked about how like she was loved history and wanted to be a teacher one day and she wanted to teach history she just loved that type of stuff he said that she was everybody's best friend she was just that type of chick that no matter where she went she was friends with everybody she had so many people that considered her to be their best friend she was just that person the person that walked into a room very charismatic lit up the whole room with her smile very very caring, would do anything for anybody type of person. Shane said that he met Heidi in the casino. They used to work at a casino together. They were both servers there. They worked together, I guess, for about a year before they started dating and then they started dating. They have a little boy named Silas who is six years old and then now a probably about a two month old little baby girl named Margot. Shane said that they had arguments like any other couple. They had their disagreements. They were on and off at some points. They would break up and get back together, and but they loved each other and they were trying to work it out. He said that he had proposed to her a while back and that he really wanted to marry Heidi and he thought that she was the one for him. Now, <clears throat> referring to Megan, if you guys do not know Megan, you go and watch my other videos first that will fill you in on like all the backstory. But Megan was supposedly like one of Heidi's most bestest friends okay she and Heidi met at a like church camp or something when they were younger and they were just great great friends they FaceTimed all the time they talked on the phone all the time they hung out all the time he said that Hi uh, Megan was in the delivery room when Heidi delivered both of her babies and if any of y'all have ever had a baby you know that's a very very intimate moment when you deliver a child you are only gonna want the most important people in your life in that room it's not the type of thing where you like hold the door open you're like hey anybody want to come and see this like it's very 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 personal because things can go beautifully right and things can go terribly wrong and just the fact to know that Megan was in there in the delivery room when she delivered both of her babies speaks volumes on how Heidi felt about Megan 
Shane said that when he found out Megan was arrested for this, he just couldn't believe it. He said, like, he just, not Megan. Like, why, Megan is her best friend. He never for a second suspected Megan, okay? Never. He said, as a matter of fact, Megan would call him every single day to see how the investiga investigation was going to check and see, have you heard anything? Is there anything I can do? Can I come there and help? All the while, Megan is sitting in her house with her best friend Heidi in a duffel bag in the trunk of her car parked out in front and inside with her baby pretending like that baby is hers. How bizarre is that? That will really like, <sighs> Oh my gosh, you guys. He said he just wants to sit down with Megan and ask her why. Like, tell me, why did you do this? Why did you feel like you had to like kill her? Like, why, like, why? He has so many questions of as of why. He said, like I said, he, he had no reason to suspect her. He said that they never even fought. Now, to me, that would be kind of a red flag if you are best friends with somebody for that many years and you've never had any kind of argument. But maybe, then again, maybe he just didn't know. Maybe he just didn't get into it. Because sometimes, you know, you know, sometimes guys are like that. Not all of you, but sometimes they are. They ain't worried about, you know, your little bickers with your girlfriends. They don't really care unless it's like a big blown up deal that they need to, you know, love you and support you. But I think it's bizarre that you know, they've never been into an argument according to Shane. Shane also said that when he saw Megan's mugshot that he did not even recognize her. He said it looked like she was on substances or she just looked like a totally different person. And if you see the pictures of Megan before the mugshot, when she's with Heidi and the pictures of Megan's mugshot, she does look like a completely different person. Like, I don't know what happened other than the fact that maybe the stress of doing something like she did, like it changed her because he said before this, he like, cause you have to understand, Megan was just in the hospital with Heidi while she was giving the baby a few weeks prior. And he saw her looking one way, and then when he saw the mugshot, he sees her looking like a totally different person. But she did ask Shane if Megan ever maybe made any advances to Shane. Did he ever, did he, did she ever try to get with him? And he said no. She never tried to push up on him. He said if anything, Megan was very, very jealous of like Heidi's relationship with him. He, she just wanted to be with Heidi at all times. Megan didn't want to be separated from Heidi. It's like Megan wanted Heidi all to herself. Now that's, now we're getting into like more of the detail, like maybe Megan became obsessed with her friend, obsessed with her life, maybe obsessed with, you know, like wanting to be her, wanting to, you know, have her baby, like, I don't know, it's so bizarre. Critical K asked Shane what his thoughts were about like maybe what happened that day. And he said that he did not know. He said what he did know was that Heidi would never leave without a car seat. So he's thinking maybe Megan came up to the house and said, hey, you know, for whatever reason, come out to the car. Maybe my baby's in here, you know, whatever. And so Heidi came outside holding the baby and maybe got into the vehicle just to sit there. And then something happened because he said that no matter what Megan would have said, she would have never left without having her baby in a car seat. He's saying that maybe she tried to take the baby and then Heidi fought back and then maybe that's what happened. And I just could not imagine what it's like to be him and have no answers, you know, just not knowing why. You, you, this person, this Megan, had a key to his home, okay? Like she could just like come in the house and like they all trusted her. Like why would she do this? So many unanswered questions. Now, some more details is the other person that was in the car with Megan, remember how we speculated because different people were saying that they thought that they saw, you know, that were living in the apartment complex, that Megan got into the passenger seat, somebody else was driving. Well, there was two people in the car. The other person's name has not been released yet because the other person is a minor. So that's very curious, curiouser and curiouser, you know, like, what happened? Was this minor in the vehicle whenever Megan strangled her? Because that's how Heidi died, is of strangulation. 
and then that that miner didn't say anything was that miner scared was it all a plan from the beginning the miner was in on it they talked a bit about shane's media interviews most of y'all have seen the, the media interviews with shane he was very very nervous kind of twitchy like looking all around scratching his neck and a lot of the public thought that he looked guilty they thought that Shane had something to do with Heidi's disappearance because of the way he looked. And then I also think that the whole Chris Watts thing has everybody on edge. It's got all of us second guessing everybody. Like, could you do it? Looking at your own husband like, could you do it? You know what I mean? So, but he said the reason why he was so, so nervous was because like, the camera guys and the audio techs and you know everybody that was there just kept telling him different things like hey you know do your arm like this or hey like hold your head up here or move over here or don't scratch or don't touch and don't be fidget like they just kept saying things to him and he was really really nervous but he wanted to do the interview because he wanted his girlfriend and his baby home a lot of people were telling him that he needed to hire a lawyer and he did not want to hire a lawyer because he said that if he hired a lawyer the lawyer was going to tell him not to speak to press and he wanted to speak to the press even though he didn't feel comfortable although he didn't feel like he was good at it but he wanted to because he wanted them back home he did say and i'm so thankful that he said this and not only said this but did this but that he was not reading anything on social media so all of the like hate he was getting and nasty comments and stuff he didn't see because he didn't look and he said he still doesn't look so that's probably helped a lot because there was a lot of stuff going on about the poor guy he said that when he got his little baby Margot back, he said that it was great, but it was also heartbreaking because Heidi wasn't with her. He said he, he wanted Heidi back too, but he realized that he wasn't gonna be getting Heidi back. And I just cannot imagine as a father, like how do you tell your children that? Like how, how did he tell his six-year-old son that mommy's not coming home and why? I'm sure their six-year-old son loved Megan too, you know, if she was around that much. It's just heartbreaking, you guys, heartbreaking. Now, speaking on Megan, Megan being pregnant, if you guys don't know, Megan turned up pregnant the same time Heidi did, okay? There is no proof that she was ever really pregnant, but supposedly she was pregnant. She delivered her baby, according to Megan, in a birthing center, although she doesn't remember the birthing center's name. She doesn't remember any of the people there. There's no documentation of any kind at all as of yet. He said he really believed her. He really believed she was pregnant. You know, she was like holding her belly and oh, acting tired and all of that. They're good stuff. And that a couple days before Heidi went missing, Megan called her and told her that she had had her baby, although they never saw any pictures of the baby, which all of that is like red flags, which is, it always is. Hindsight is always 2020. But like, why wasn't Heidi in the room when Megan gave birth? You know, Megan was in the room when Heidi gave birth to both of her kids. Now, does that mean just because if I have a baby and I have you in the room, yes, you, that I'm obligated or you owe me to let me in the room when you have your baby? No, it doesn't mean that at all. But the way that it seems that they were just such good friends, they couldn't do anything without each other, they FaceTimed all the time, key to the house, like why wasn't Heidi at least invited to be at the birthing center you know, so whenever they were done giving birth, she could see the baby. I don't know. That's even more of what makes me feel like she was never pregnant and she never really had a baby. Now, this is gets a little bit more interesting here. If you guys don't know, Megan Formuska, who is the best friend of Heidi, Megan Formuska is the one who had the vehicle that Heidi's body was found in the duffel bag inside of. She had a boyfriend named Chris Green. Now she lived with Chris Green and Chris Green believed that this baby, which was Heidi's baby, was his baby for a short period of time. <sighs> Everybody's wanting to know who tipped off the cops to go to Megan's and search it. Shane believes, he just thinks this, this is what he said in the, the interview, that Chris, Megan's boyfriend, who supposedly he believed he was the father of this baby at this point. I know it's so confusing. I hope y'all are staying with me here. Shane believes that Chris called CPS on Megan because she wasn't taking care of the baby the way she needed to be. And that I guess the baby had jaundice and that it could possibly be because he was worried that, you know, maybe she wasn't taking good enough of care of her. You know, jaundice can cause brain damage and all of these things. 
Although he said that that was a theory and it could be that, come to find out that is not how CPS got called. CPS got called from the investigators who ran into Chris at the store. Remember I told you guys about that in the, the previous video? That Chris left the house to go and get formula for the baby that he thought was his, that was not his, and he ran into the police in the store and he told them, you know, the baby has jaundice, and so they called CPS, and that's how CPS got involved, but, oh, it's crazy. Now, it is important to know that the FBI was actually watching Megan. They were conducting surveillance on her house before anybody knew she was a suspect, so a call to CPS isn't what started the investigation into her. They were already looking at her and had to confirm that Margo was there, and once Chris Green confirmed it at Target, then CPS became involved. Now, remember how I told y'all that, you know, Chris said that Megan was calling all the time to check and see if he had heard anything about Heidi? He said he never heard a baby crying in the background. So, man, she really planned this out. I mean, obviously not too good, which thank God, because thank God she didn't get away with it, but she was really like trying to be sneaky. Like, she's literally sitting there, you guys. She is calling him okay, calling Shane to check on Heidi, who is missing, but Heidi is actually in the trunk of her car in a duffel bag, dead. Like, oh my gosh. All right, now for the good news, and the thing that we have all been wondering, Megan was finally charged with capital murder. We were all wondering why she wasn't charged with murder. If this is your first video on this. Previously, she was charged with two counts of kidnapping and one count of tampering with a corpse, but she has now been charged with capital murder. The indictment stated that Megan choked Broussard by strangulation with a leash and with her hands. Megan's bond has been set at $1 million for the capital murder charge and $100,000 on the kidnapping charge. Her attorney, Brian Erskine, said in a statement that the state has not disclosed what evidence they have against her. He said that they are exploring all options at their disposal to vigorously represent Miss Formuska. Megan was initially arrested. Oh, I already said that. So there we go, guys. There is the update. Now, I will tell you that Shane does have a GoFundMe going for him right now. And he said it's really been hard for him to go back to work. I can, I mean, he has gone back to work, but I can only imagine, like, this is true. This is, you, you know, his life will never be the same. Never be the same. I've heard that, you know, he's been going to some support groups, which I'm really, really happy for him. And if, if you watch this by any chance, Shane, like, all of our love over here, baby gang, and support to you, like, we're cheering you on. But he's having a hard time. He is a single dad now of three kids and has to work full time and just, you know, has been going through all of this. So if you guys want to and you can spare anything at all, a dollar, two, three, whatever you have, I'm going to leave his GoFundMe link down in the description box and maybe we can help him out a little bit because I just could not imagine going to work. Also, you guys, don't forget to check out Critical K if you want to watch the whole entire interview. It was really, really good. And other than that, I will keep you guys updated on this. I'm going to be following the whole entire trial as much as I can. I, I want to know what she has to say. I want to know why she said she did it. I want to know what she's going to plead. Although she's pleading innocent right now, or not guilty, I, I, I hope that they have it like a live trial where they have cameras in there and we can watch everything. I'm just, I'm invested. I'm invested in this, you guys. So, thank you guys so much for watching. As always, please don't forget to like this video. It's a free way that you can help your girl out. And until next time, I love you guys so, so, so very much. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.